Oftentimes, genes and the traits that they express will follow your traditional dominant versus recessive pattern where if the dominant allele is present, then that's the phenotype that it'll show. But there are also plenty of times where it gets a bit more complicated and you get into cases of co-dominance or incomplete dominance. And so we'll just go through the three different types and how you can distinguish between the ways that they're expressed phenotypically. The big question with all of these is what happens with the heterozygotes? And that makes sense because if something is homozygous for a dominant trait or a recessive trait, it will just display that phenotype. There's no question there. The question is when the genotype is, is mixed, when it's a heterozygous genotype, how is that expressed? And so the traditional way of looking at it is that if you're a heterozygote with one of the dominant and one of the recessive alleles, then the dominant phenotype will be expressed. And there are so many of the examples of these out in nature, you don't have to memorize any of them. It's not something that you're responsible for on the MCAT. They'll tell you if you need to know which one's dominant and recessive. But realize that the traditional patterns and the ones that Gregor Mendel discovered, dominant alleles are the ones that overpower. And so if you have one of those alleles, whether it's homozygous where you have both or whether it's heterozygous where you have one dominant and one recessive, you will express that phenotype and that's the most likely type of dominance pattern you'll see. There are two others that people get confused about and so we'll just go through the distinctions between those and again the question is what happens with the heterozygotes? So incomplete dominance means that the dominant one will be evident but it's not it's not complete. So what you end up with is a blended phenotype. And an example of that is going to be pink flowers. And so uh, if a flower has, let's say, a dominant gene for red and a recessive gene for white, the heterozygous version of that with, let's just say, big R for red and lowercase r for white, that will exhibit itself as pink. It's in between the dominant red phenotype and the recessive white phenotype. So it will be somewhere in between. So if the heterozygotes are somewhere between the dominant and recessive phenotypes, that's incomplete dominance. You're seeing some evidence of the dominant phenotype, but not enough to where you can say that it's clearly dominant and indistinguishable from something that is homozygous dominant. Codominance is slightly different. Codominance means that both of the phenotypes are going to be expressed. And so rather than a blend between them, it'll just be an expression of both of them. So one example that they like to use, and again, it, it deals with red and white, is a uh, roan horse. Roan horses have both red and white fur. So it'll have parts that are red and parts that are white, rather than it having sort of a blended pinkish fur, it just has areas where the fur is red and other areas where it's white. Another place and one that you see in human physiology is with blood antigens. Somebody with an A and B allele in their blood will have red blood cells, erythrocytes, that display both the A and B antigens. And so that's the AB blood type. Neither A nor B is more dominant than the other. Both of them are evident and it expresses both of the phenotypes. And so the big distinction they like to test you on is incomplete dominance where you see a blended phenotype, which is something like red and white combining into pink flowers, versus co-dominance where you see both phenotypes expressed their own way. And that would be a horse with a roan pattern where some of it is pure red, other parts of it are pure white, and as a result, it expresses characteristics of both of the phenotypes, and that's also something you encounter a lot with blood types. So be aware of these three distinctions, and realize the only time they're ever relevant is when you have heterozygotes. If you have homozygotes, it's clear-cut and straightforward. The heterozygotes are the ones where you want to understand the dominance pattern and how that will manifest itself physically.